Serial killers, perhaps one of the most frightening and fascinating subjects in criminology, have long been a subject of fascination for the public. These individuals are known for their methodical approach to multiple murders, often committing the crimes over a prolonged period of time and with a specific motive. The term serial killer itself is quite recent, dating back only to the 1970 seconds when it began to be used to describe individuals who kill more than one person. However, the crimes of serial killers have been a part of human history for centuries. From the infamous Jack the Ripper to the more recent cases of Ted Bundy and Jeffrey Dahmer, serial killers have captivated our collective imagination and terrified us with their inhuman drives and behavior. Today, the study of serial killers is a multidisciplinary field, involving psychology, criminology, forensic science, and law enforcement. Number 1. Pedro Alonso Lopez Pedro Alonso Lopez, also known as the Monster of the Andes, is a convicted serial killer from Colombia. Born on October 8, 1948, in Talama, Colombia, Pedro Alonso Lopez targeted young girls, primarily in Colombia, Ecuador, and Peru, during the 1970 seconds. Lopez's early life was marked by a traumatic childhood. He claimed to have been molested at a young age and was later orphaned after his mother died when he was eight years old. Reports suggest that he may have had a difficult upbringing, which could have contributed to his later criminal activities. Between 1978 and 1980, Lopez is believed to have raped, tortured, and killed over 300 young girls, although the exact number remains uncertain. He specifically targeted girls between the ages of 8 and 12. Lopez's modus operandi involved gaining the trust of the children, often posing as a harmless figure, before luring them to a secluded location where he would commit his heinous acts. In 1980, Lopez was arrested in Ecuador after an attempted abduction, and the police discovered the remains of several of his victims buried nearby. Shockingly, despite the severity of his crimes, Ecuadorian authorities released him due to a combination of overcrowded prisons, outdated laws, and incompetence in documenting his crimes. After his release, Lopez managed to evade capture and disappeared from public view. There were rumors of his continued criminal activities, but concrete evidence was lacking. He remained at large until 1983 when a local tribe in Peru apprehended him after an unsuccessful abduction. Lopez was handed over to the Peruvian police, and the authorities charged him with multiple counts of murder and sexual assault. During his trial, he confessed to killing hundreds of girls, leading to his nickname, the Monster of the Andes. In 1983, Lopez was convicted and sentenced to life in prison. Despite his horrifying crimes, the Colombian government expressed interest in extraditing Lopez, as it was believed he had committed many murders in Colombia as well. However, due to an error in the paperwork, he was released from prison in 1998 for good behavior. The current whereabouts and status of Pedro Alonso Lopez are unknown. Some reports suggest that he may have returned to his criminal activities, while others claim he may have died or is still serving a sentence in another country. However, since my knowledge is based on information available up until September 2021, I cannot provide any recent updates on his situation. Number 2 Luis Alfredo Luis Alfredo Garavito, also known as La Bestia or the Beast, is a Colombian serial killer and child molester. Born on January 25, 1957, in Genova, Colombia, Garavito confessed to the brutal murders of at least 138 young boys between the ages of 6 and 16 from 1992 to 1999. Garavito targeted impoverished and vulnerable children, often street children or those from marginalized communities, luring them with promises of gifts or money. He would then take them to secluded areas where he would sexually assault, torture, and murder them. His methods of killing varied, but most victims were found with signs of strangulation or stab wounds. The sheer number of Garavito's victims and the brutality of his crime shocked Colombia and the world. His actions became one of the most notorious cases of serial murder in history. Garavito's crimes exposed significant flaws in the Colombian law enforcement and justice system, as it took several years for authorities to apprehend him. In February 1999, Garavito was arrested while attempting to abduct another young boy. He eventually confessed to the murders of the 138 boys and provided detailed information about the locations of their remains. His cooperation led to the discovery of many victims' bodies, although it is believed that there may be more victims who have not been identified. In 2000, Garavito was found guilty of the murder of 138 children and was sentenced to 1,853 years and 9 days in prison, the maximum sentence allowed under Colombian law. 
However, due to Colombian laws that limit prison terms to 40 years, Garavito's sentence was reduced to 22 years. He is incarcerated in a high-security prison in Colombia. Garavito's case brought attention to the issue of child exploitation and the vulnerability of street children in Colombia and other parts of the world. It also highlighted the need for improved child protection measures, investigation techniques, and support for victims. Number 3 Jay Vigbal Jay Vigbal was a Pakistani serial killer who gained infamy for his heinous crimes. Born on October 8, 1956, in Lahore, Pakistan, Iqbal committed a series of brutal murders targeting young boys in the late 1,990 seconds. Iqbal's crimes came to light in December 1,999 when he sent a letter to the police confessing to the murders. In the letter, he claimed to have killed 100 boys over a span of two years, between 1,998 and 1,999. The letter included graphic details of his crimes and expressed his intention to surrender himself to the authorities. According to his confession, Idbal lured young boys, primarily between the ages of 6 and 16, to his house with the promise of employment, food, and shelter. Once in his custody, he subjected them to sexual abuse, torture, and ultimately murdered them. He then dismembered the bodies and disposed of them in acid-filled barrels to destroy the evidence. Following his confession, the police launched an investigation and discovered evidence at Idbal's residence, including photographs, videotapes, and journals documenting his crimes. The authorities also located the acid-filled barrels containing human remains. However, before Idbal could be formally charged and stand trial, he was found dead in his prison cell on October 7, 2001. The cause of death was reported as suicide by hanging. His death prevented him from facing justice for his crimes in a court of law. Javed Idbal's case drew widespread attention and sparked public outrage in Pakistan. It shed light on the issue of child exploitation and the vulnerability of young boys to such crimes. The case prompted calls for stricter laws and improved measures to protect children from abuse and violence. Number 4 Gary Leon Rigway Gary Leon Rigway, also known as the Green River Killer, is an American serial killer who terrorized the Seattle, Washington area during the 1980 seconds and 1990 seconds. Born on February 18, 1949, in Salt Lake City, Utah, Rigway was convicted of murdering numerous young women, primarily sex workers and runaways. Rigway began his killing spree in the early 1980 seconds. He targeted vulnerable women, many of whom he picked up along Pacific Highway South, an area known for prostitution. Rigway would often strangle his victims to death and dispose of their bodies in remote outdoor locations, particularly near the Green River, which earned him the nickname Green River Killer. His crimes went undetected for years as he managed to avoid suspicion and continued his violent acts. However, by the mid-1980s, the number of missing women in the area raised concerns, leading to the formation of a task force dedicated to solving the case. Despite their efforts, Rigway remained elusive and continued his killings. In 2001, advances in forensic technology allowed investigators to link Rigway to several victims through DNA evidence. He was arrested in November of that year and eventually confessed to the murders of 48 women. However, he later claimed to have killed closer to 71 victims. Ridway provided information to help authorities locate the remains of some of his victims, assisting in the closure and identification of the deceased. In 2003, Ridway pleaded guilty to 48 counts of aggravated murder as part of a plea agreement to avoid the death penalty. He cooperated with investigators and provided details about his crimes in exchange for a life sentence without the possibility of parole. Rigway is currently serving his sentence at the Washington State Penitentiary. The case of Gary Rigway stands as one of the most prolific instances of serial murder in U.S. history. His crimes highlighted the vulnerability of marginalized individuals and the challenges faced by law enforcement in investigating and apprehending serial killers. The investigation and prosecution of Rigway showcased the importance of forensic advancements in solving cold cases and bringing closure to the families of victims. Number 5 Young Xinhai Young Xinhai, also known as the Monster Killer or Yellow Demolition Agent, was a Chinese serial killer who operated between 1999 and 2003. Born on July 29, 1968, in Jinyang County, Henan Province, China, Yang Xinhai is one of the most prolific serial killers in Chinese history. Yang's crimes involved home invasions and brutal murders. He targeted residents of rural areas, often choosing homes that appeared to be easy targets. Once inside, 
Young would kill the occupants, including men, women, and children, using various methods such as bludgeoning, stabbing, and strangulation. He also committed acts of rape and robbery during his killing sprees. Due to the lack of effective communication between different regions and limited media coverage, Yang's crimes initially went unnoticed and were not connected. However, as his killing spree continued, authorities began to realize that a single serial killer was responsible for multiple murders across different provinces. In 2003, Yang was arrested by the police after a failed robbery attempt. During interrogation, he confessed to committing 67 murders and 23 rapes, although the exact number of victims is still debated. Yang showed no remorse for his actions and claimed to have killed for the sake of killing, citing a deep-rooted hatred for society. In 2004, Yang Xinhai was found guilty of his crimes and was sentenced to death. His execution by firing squad took place on February 14, 2004. His case shocked the Chinese public and raised concerns about mental health issues and social problems in the country. Yang Xinhai's killing spree and the scale of his crimes left a significant impact on Chinese society. It led to discussions about public safety, the importance of effective law enforcement, and the need for mental health support systems. His case also highlighted the importance of early detection and investigation of serial crimes to prevent further loss of life.